Hey guys, Bridge here. In this video, we're going to create this onboarding screen in Figma. Now, onboarding screens are really useful, and by the end of it, you're going to learn not only tips and tricks on how to create efficient onboarding screens, but also the optimal Figma flows. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so we're back in Figma, and now let's uh, go ahead and let's rename this uh, to onboarding. Uh, and we're going to add a new frame right here on the top left, which is going to be under desktop. And we're going to select 1440 pixels of width. And uh, let's double click on this. And let's rename this to one. All right, so we have our base going on. And now we're going to start adding some text. So we're going to write in, uh, um, let us know your preferences. And we're going to use uh, a Google web font, which is called Lato, and uh, which you can find on, uh, uh, simply by Googling Lato font, uh, you're going to find it right away for free. And uh, let's go ahead over here and let's create also a rectangle, which is going to serve us uh, as uh, the uh, basic area for the illustration. All right, so far so good. Now let's duplicate this by using Shift and the Option key at the same time while dragging it with the left mouse button. And uh, let's make the, this a little bit smaller, maybe something around 16 pixels. And uh, we're going to also add another rectangle, which is going to serve as the base for the options which we're going to have uh, at our disposal for this onboarding sequence. So let's bring this one right here and we're going to just round this up just a little bit and uh, we're going to make it white. So let's add a white fill to the mix or actually I selected both of them. So we only need to select the rectangle. Now let's go on the effects. Let's add a drop shadow and uh, let's make it a little bit more pronounced and have just a little bit of uh, Y um, uh, basically going on, <laughs> meaning that uh, the drop shadow should be a little bit going uh, towards the bottom and not uh, fully central. And the reason why I like to do that is it just adds a little bit of more depth to the experience. So that's something that uh, I like to do once in a while strategically when it makes sense. And uh, let's just Go ahead over here and let's try and uh, center all of this. Uh, and uh, we're also going to start adding some uh, icons. So let's get started with the very first one. And we're going to use uh, Nucleo icons, which uh, you can find uh, at, I believe it's nucleoapp.com or simply Google Nucleo icons. You're going to find them right away. And uh, I'm going to go with the colored icons and let's go ahead and let's add uh, with this one and we're also going to select the following ones uh, uh, right here so i just want to essentially find some icons which are going to work well in this uh, context so with this one then this one and there we go so all right so far so good let's make this icon just a little bit smaller we don't want to have uh, a lot of visual emphasis on this. And uh, let's write uh, something around the lines of uh, be I am looking to mine bitcoins. And uh, the second option is going to be right here. I'm going to duplicate this just a few times and uh, Maybe have uh, these uh, with a smaller shadow just to make this a uh, little bit softer. And uh, let's also remove uh, or actually decrease uh, the blur to analyze data. And uh, I'm looking to create advanced uh, databases and uh, this of course you know i'm just making it up um, it's just for the sake of demonstration so feel free to add any copy that uh, you prefer in this specific example 
And um, essentially, one thing to keep in mind is whenever you're tackling onboarding experiences is you don't want to overwhelm the user with a lot of options. Since uh, at this point, the user might have like a lot of thinking to do. So you want to reduce that uh, to a to the bare minimum, essentially. So something to keep in mind at all times. All right, so we have our three options right here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and also add a continue button. So let's do it right here. I'm going to make it smaller. I'm going to select also the text. Let's make the text white and heavy. And we're going to add a linear gradient. It's going to be going towards a blue tint. Let's do the same for also the second gradient. And we're going to make a first one just a little bit lighter so that we can have that nice uh, um, almost uh, rounded effect meaning that uh, just adds a little bit of, um, of more um, how would you say <laughs> bevel to it 3d effect I think you get uh, what I'm saying so there we go let's bring it right here and uh, as you can see, we have these uh, these options, and uh, now what we want to do is, in order to make it even easier for the users to understand that they simply need to click uh, on one of these in order to continue, is I want to add an arrow, and uh, for for this case, I don't want it to be colored since uh, basically the rationale here is that I just want to give them a small hint uh, that they can perform this this action, which is going to enable them to move forward. So I want to keep it uh, lighter and uh, yeah, let's just bring it over here and let's uh, go ahead and duplicate this just a few times, bring it up and there we go. And the alarm clock of course happens when I'm doing the YouTube videos. All right. so. So far, so good, I would say. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to duplicate this button right here. I'm going to write, go back and uh, make it uh, medium. So it doesn't bring, uh, doesn't create a lot of emphasis. I'm also going to duplicate one of these arrows. Let's flip it on its own. And let's bring it uh, right here. All right, so far, so good, I would say. But one thing that I'm noticing is that this uh, text is a little bit too light uh, and that would uh, hinder usability. So we want to just increase the color just a bit. Let's add over here also a login option since uh, for users who are already logged in, uh, um, who already signed up uh, and um, they might be stumbling upon this process they basically have a way out so that's going to be helpful now let's find a logo for this uh, for this app and I'm going to try and find like a minimal element which uh, we can uh, consider the logo um, ideally it would be a uh, company logo or something around those lines. So let's just uh, go over here and let's try and find uh, something which uh, which might work. Um, for example, this one could be quite cool. And we want uh, a icon essentially, which is going to be very minimal, like very straight to the point, not too much going on in terms of uh, visual complexity, if you wish. So even stuff like that could work uh, pretty well. Just the, the type of logos which you usually see uh, out of uh, um, SaaS companies these days. So yeah, maybe let's just keep this one. Let's put it right here. Let's assume that it's the company logo. All right. 
Now what we're gonna do is we're going to add a um, image from uh, LS Graphics, which uh, is an amazing place to find uh, uh, mockups, uh, UI kits, uh, and much, much more. And uh, we're going to use this one from the presentations uh, uh, with clay mockups. So we're going to simply go over here, copy image, go back in Figma, and paste it in. And as you can see, even just the image alone is, is bringing a lot uh, of uh, um, movement and the dynamism to the composition. So you can see how, how much a quality picture can actually aid uh, the experience overall. So definitely uh, keep this in mind. The same is true also for illustrations and uh, things of that nature. So let's just make it just a touch smaller so that it's not uh, uh, too overwhelming. And let's also change the background color to something around these lines. So there you go. <clears throat> we have our onboarding screen and uh, we're ready to rock and roll essentially. So I really hope you enjoyed this uh, video tutorial. And uh, I want to remind you that on my channel, I have over 400 uh, videos, both software tutorials and also uh, theory where I'm sharing my over nine years of experience working as a UX designer. So feel free to check it out if you're interested in this topic and I'll see you in the next video.